Welcome back to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Today we're talking UFC 290, which was a banger of a card. And honestly, I wish they'd do more cards like this and just a less amount of cards. Quality over quantity for me. And it really showed with this event because back in the day, this would have been quite a normal level event to put on for the UFC. And now it feels like card of the year. Whereas we used to have stacked cards like this so often. I'm going to start off with Alexander Volkanovsky, who defeated Yaya Rodriguez by TKO punches. And honestly, I was really surprised at how comfortable this was. I really rate Yaya Rodriguez as striking. Been a fan of him for years, and I thought, he's tricky. He's going to give you some problems. And it just shows the level Volkanovsky has gone to. It's insane. And as you can see here, Yaya Rodriguez, amazing striker. So what do I do? I'm going to take him to somewhere he's less comfortable. And that is the beauty of being a well-rounded fighter like Volkanovski is. It's a little bit like JSP in his prime. I mean, JSP was more wrestle-heavy. I feel like Volkanovski varies his style a lot more because we're in a different level of MMA and now it's evolved and you have more well-rounded fighters. But he will find an area to take a fight that he will beat you in. And that is why he, for me, is probably pound for pound number one. And he basically mauled Rodriguez for a couple of rounds before taking it into the third. You know, you see him busting him up here just domination he managed to suck the wind out of him drain him a bit so that he could compete with him on the feet and the power of Volkanovsky is significantly stronger in the hands um, but that one shot there was all it took and that he, Volkanovsky had the confidence to do that from those first two rounds of softening him up and this is I mean this is abuse at this point like it's it's not even a competitive fight this should have been this absolutely should have been competitive. And that's the level Volkanovski is on. That is no disrespect to Rodriguez. I still think he's an elite level fighter, but this was so comfortable. And the nod from Rodriguez says, beaten by the better man. And in terms of all time, I think Volkanovski's number one featherweight. Like, don't get me wrong, Aldo's probably the other guy I'd put up there. I just think that any version of any featherweight now gets beaten by this version of Volkanovski. Now, this was a very fun fight to watch. Moreno versus Pantoja for the flyweight championship. And, you know, they'd fought before. Pantoja had won previously, but Moreno was coming in as a new and improved guy. And honestly, the first round, I was staggered. I mean, you'll see here, um, once they separate in the striking department, Pantoja is just really hurting him over and over again. And like, Moreno, I've, I've got to give the kid credit, man. The heart of him is absolutely outrageous. And he got battered in this first round, but he did come back stronger. And when you consider that Pantoja, just that, so people who don't know, I heard he was a Uber delivery driver about two fights ago. When people tell me that the UFC pay their fighters enough, are you on crack? Like, why is this guy delivering pizzas two fights ago that he's fighting for the title now? Like, that, that is absolutely mind-blowing and think about it what what level would he be on if he hadn't have been delivering pizzas while trying to be a fucking flyweight champion of the world and in this first round he pretty much dominated the champ second round it looked like he'd blown the gas to be honest with you moreno really came back and established all right i'm the champ i'm not going anywhere here one thing i will say is technically as much as i love these kind of fights you know, no one was fainting. No one was like setting things up really to the way you'd expect for a, it was just non-stop brawling. And I love it. But if you're their coaches, you may be like, I mean, come on, can you can you try and give them something else to worry about rather than what you're actually doing? You know, at least the sky something. That's the beauty of the flyweight fights. They might not have the power, but it allows them to put on a fucking show and they are so fast and they will throw and throw and throw. Jesus, Jesus, damn, it's like, what the hell, this is mental to watch, like, there isn't a training camp that gets you ready for this, is there, I mean, it's just like, what are you doing, in the third round, I think this is where Pantoja really established that he was going to take over this fight, he got the body lock here on the floor, and put uh, Moreno into a bad spot. Moreno is 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 staying in the fight, but he is not taking over. It felt like as the championship rounds came into play, we see in the game plan from Pantoja, whereas Moreno, I didn't feel like there was one. It was just swing and hope. 
and uh, there was a lot more variation in takedowns and mixing uh, and actually defending himself adequately. Whereas Moreno's like mouth open, chin out there, uh, Pantoja just just more of a sound, uh, well rounded fighter for me in this one. And a great delivery guy. If you ever need your pizza there on time, he is fucking spectacular. Love heard. Bear in mind, Dana White spent a hundred thousand dollars last year on sneakers, uh, which he said on a recent uh, TV show he was on. And I'm like, you got your flyweight champion two fights ago delivering pizzas just to make ends meet and you're spending a hundred grand on sneakers mate how they can outwardly say this stuff with a straight face and claim that they are doing their best by the fighters i'm not saying don't run a business i'm not saying don't be in profit and all of that i get it but fuck me pantoja gets the decision and the thing he said in his post fight speech about his mother raising him and his brothers and sisters or whatever and you know now are you proud of me dad because dad wasn't there fuck bro that was that was some deep shit to be uh, you know in your moment you've just become champion of the world and that daddy issue is still there and i'm not ridiculing him at all for this i i just think it shows the level of importance of that relationship was to him and uh i'm glad he, he spoke his mind in that moment and give us something different because immediately now you stick out you're the guy who mentioned you know where's my fucking dad in that in that speech and it gives us something to remember him by and it's so important to do that when you have a big moment especially at the lighter weights because let's be real they don't get the attention so yeah overall great fight great performance from both guys i'd say the rematch however the show stealer of the night drickus duplessis wow you know like we knew he was legit when he beat darren till right although darren till was coming off of a few defeats darren till still darren till and robert whittaker let's not forget has only been beaten by israel adesanya robert whittaker is a is a ufc middleweight legend this man beats everyone aside from Izzy, and yet Drickus went in there and didn't just go to a decision with him like Izzy did. He broke him. I was mind-blown, because I was like, okay, I'll give Drickus a chance, because that big boy is powerful. He is the strongest middleweight, arguably, just in terms of, like, in the clinch. You know, I, I bet he is the strongest of the lot of them. And God, can he punch. Like, we really see in that one of his punches versus three or four of Robert Whittaker's, that one is was 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 the more powerful it was more important so this is the level of strength this guy has and if he keeps improving his technique and that weird style he has which is very difficult for people to work out and i do think that whittaker really struggled with it and duplessis was very good at covering up here he kept his guard high um and and always just managed to make sure that those quick shots from robert whittaker were bouncing off the gloves he found his range and he drops him and immediately robert whittaker is not responding like someone who's still in this fight he is responding in a way we never normally see him respond and duplessis is a finisher and i'll tell you now as much as i think it's right that izzy is the favorite if izzy gets hurt by this guy he is going to put him away we know this now. You do not beat Robert Whittaker unless you're the real deal. And the re reaction from Izzy set this fight in stone as one of my most anticipated. And let's not forget the history these two have between Drickus coming out with the comment about I'm the real African champion. I live in Africa. I train in Africa. I breathe African air. And Izzy did not like that. But Izzy took issue with that long before he's seen this fight and i think izzy is probably of the state of mind in that moment of who the fuck is this guy i'm the champ i'm gonna put you in your place and don't get me wrong i'm not saying he doesn't believe that still but the level of respect izzy will have after he's just done that to a guy that izzy didn't finish in their last fight this is bad blood and the ufc needs that more than ever the lack of stars in the ufc right now is quite evident don't get me wrong a lot of good fighters but i'm talking about stars and izzy is a bona fide star and he needs dance partners he had one in the last guy, Alex, who was an absolute beast. He's now got one in this guy. And uh, you know what? I think this is actually worse bad blood. Way worse. Because I think this guy really will clash well with Izzy in that he's saying, look at him. He's a clown. I'm acting like a gentleman and all of that. Like, that's the road to go down. Play the polar opposite. We love that. In regards to the Africa stuff, people would be like, don't say anything, Jordy. I just kind of wish that that wasn't a thing here because, you know, I hope they embrace it some point and go, come on, we're both African one way or another. Like, th this is silly, right? 
but it's certainly adding some spice to this shit. And I'm here for it. This is what I was saying on Twitter the other day. What we don't want, we don't want to hear, I respect my opponent. Save that for afterwards. It's boring. We don't want to hear, it is what it is. No one knows what that means. That doesn't mean anything. Of course it is what it is. I've trained hard for this fight. You're supposed to, okay? I want bad blood, man. I want to hear what you're going to do. When I'm listening to the AJ versus Dillian White press conference, right? And, you know, I like both guys and I'm looking forward to the, a good fight. But it's like, what, what's going to happen? Well, you know, well, it's like, fucking hell, tell me you're going to kill him. For Christ's sakes, I want to pay the pay-per-view, but you're not giving me anything right now. So, yeah, but I'm all for this shit. Love it. This was a insane fight. Dan Hooker has earned his stripes in the UFC as much as anyone. I mean, he's kind of becoming the new Donald Cerrone in a sense, where he's like a, a bad motherfucker, and he might get chinned, or he might chin you. This is the type of fighter that the UFC is built on. They, they may never be the main event. They may never make the huge money, but without these guys filling the card it would be boring until the main event and uh, respect to him turner really put it on him jesus i must admit like dan hook i really need to set these punches up better in future because the reason he's getting caught is he's just running forward and throwing shots and that you know chin up hands down like don't get me wrong he's landing some here but like this is where his defense struggles a bit you can see dan hook has will to win and his cardio is greater than turner that's actually what the difference maker is in this fight. He's a fucking lunatic, this skeezer. And he'd literally give him a kilt and a sword and put him on a field in a war because he's made for it. But you can't keep doing that. This is what happened to Donald Cerrone. I compared him to Donald Cerrone earlier. Once that chin goes, you're finished. And before we end this video, I do want to show some appreciation for Ruthless Robbie Lola, who went out at the end of his career last weekend after an entire career of brutal knockouts this man brought the pain he put the pain in the pain game and uh he, you know he went out in style the way he did a lot of his fights which is knocking motherfuckers out and this guy uh who we fought price he was no way prepared for what was coming which was a tornado because once they are locked up ruthless Robbie Lola was ruthless and he just dropped him with a beautiful uppercut in the clinch and it was as easy as that and I was so happy for him because they put him as the last fight on the prelims and I get that you know in the sense it's a main event of the prelims but this is a man who damn like main evented welterweight champion you know had the belt was was a legend you know like he he was a star he made stars this is what the ufc is all about is fighters like robbie lawler i remember hearing about robbie lawler when i first ever watched mma before well before 2010 and yet to see him have this moment and they put together a lovely highlight package of his career he is a gladiator and you know you've got that tattoo on his arm it's very apt uh what a stoic animal that he is of a man like it must be really hard to know when to call it a day because this guy has literally just had violence his whole entire life as an outlet and uh, to walk away from the adulation the money and everything i just hope that he's got his life all planned out and uh you know there's no uh, struggles with letting go of the game because that man is as warrior as warrior gets in the fight game. McGregor's already said he'll be back. I think McGregor sees a little bit of himself in Robbie Lawler. Real talk, they're not the same. They're not the. They're not built the same. Robbie Lawler has been way more active, way more fights. He is well more prepared to go without, to be in that octagon, to sacrifice, to give everything. He is the definition of a fighter. He isn't someone who takes years and years away from the game the way McGregor has. He is built different this man has 47 fights all right 30 wins 16 losses like to keep going with that many losses to have the faith the belief in yourself this is a man with insane willpower so that was ufc 290 we finally found out izzy adesanya's true arch nemesis someone who can get under his skin and really bring out the best or the worst, we'll find out. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you thought. Did you disagree with anything I said? Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Pain Game video.